Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. When I was a kid, if you bombed, it was something really, really bad. But now I understand that being the bomb is something really good. So I wanted a Valentine's Day project and well, my wife has been on the other side of that camera since I've been making these videos and with me for much longer than that. Right now she can't be out here with me in the shop because it's a bit dangerous for her since she's recovering from her second knee surgery in eight weeks. So I'm doing this a solo. But still, I'm going to make this for my wife since she is the bomb for me. And meanwhile, while we're at it, we're going to use the octagon method to cut a perfect sphere and hollow it. For this project, I grabbed a chunk of apple that has been drying for a couple of years. It seemed to be enough for a sphere, but since the ends were cut at weird angles, hmm, well, I glued on some end pieces and tried to make them parallel. Well, not quite. Now mounted between centers, I can round the wood into a cylinder. Almost without thinking, I cut a tenon on the end. But wait, there is a little bit of paperwork to do. Well, not paperwork, just a couple of extremely useful calculations needed to use the octagon method. After measuring the diameter, I decide to work outward from the middle. The only difference here is that I cut the calculated measures in half to work from the middle out. I'll repeat the key factors in the description. Don't worry, there are still only two factors to keep in your phone notes. Well, that old tenon gets cut off as I cut both ends down to equal the diameter of the octagon side. Since I will be cutting off the corners anyway, I cut a new tenon. Since I will be hollowing this project, I need to use a chuck which needs a new tenon. Then cut the corner off the tailstock end, but since I need chuck mount, I can only cut a little from the other end. This is to give some indication of the limits for hollowing later. With the wood now mounted to a chuck, I start by drilling out the center with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to a depth that looks good for the diameter. Then, still following the octagon method, I mark divisions on the available faces to guide rounding off the sphere by eye. Not perfect, yet, but close. Then pull out some hollowing tools. With this small sphere, I can do most of the hollowing with the straight cutter, stopping periodically to clear shavings and to measure wall thickness. Then touch up a bit more with a bent cutter. With hollowing complete, I can finish rough rounding and trim back as much excess as I can. Now to mount a couple of cup face weights that I've been using for years. But you're saying, what about that big, ugly tenon used to mount for the hollowing? Not a problem, since I rarely have the end dubs totally gone at this point anyway. I will just have to carefully whittle it down with my spindle gouge. This is all part of the first part of the cup center phase. Then rotate the sphere 90 degrees in cup centers, then continue with the spindle gouge to address the ends that were covered by the cup centers. Couple more rotations and refinements to bring the sphere closer to perfection.
Now for the sanding phase. I smear the wood with my sanding media, beeswax and mineral oil, and go at it with 80 grit. Three rotations for each grit up through 400 grit perfects the sphere. Wow! Even that hole into the interior was not a problem. The sphere is finished. I dare anyone with an expensive sphere jig to do the same as quickly. For more details, please see my previous videos. To complete my project, I want a removable plug. This is walnut mounted to a screw chuck I purchased from Bert Delisle. This now is a spindle project and I pro out the skew. I need a taper cut from smaller than the hole to larger than the hole in the sphere. For a bit of visual interest, I add some v-grooves. After sanding, I can burn the grooves for a bit more accent before applying more mineral oil and beeswax for a finish. Then add some heavy string for a fuse or whatever whim I want it to be. This was fun. For Valentine's Day, this is for my wife. She's the bomb for me and has been for over 50 years and counting. Meanwhile, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. I hate to nag, but are you wearing yours?